Hello, I am Sean Sands from Gamers with Jobs, and I am back with more Factorio and conversation. Uh, let's let's look around here. We'll, we'll get to our topic in a minute. Um, I've set up my initial run of uh, what's this, what's this stuff? Iron, right? Yeah. Um, iron, yeah. So. Uh, iron and copper. I've got my initial run of that going. The plan in the long term here is to probably build two lines of iron here, iron smelting, two lines of copper smelting, uh, and bring them around here. So we're going to go ahead and start clearing out some area. Um, and we'll talk, I think, I think I want to begin to actually build out uh, the main bus of, of my, my run here. And we'll get into what that actually looks like soon. Um, I'm pretty, uh, I want to be careful of this alien nest over here and make sure I don't, um, run into a situation where I'm sort of overextended. Uh, so I think, uh, let's see, do I have, I still have another turret here. I think we'll go ahead and throw another turret down just to be safe. And we will put, um, half of that in here. So we will put those 12 in there. Now we have a turret here. We have kind of a gap here, which I want to be careful of. We have another turret over here protecting our um, our engines and sort of up this line. Uh, the nice thing is we have this big sort of water, well, I guess a giant lake. Do we, we don't know much more about it. We haven't built any satellite dishes late yet, uh, but we have this big lake behind us. Um, so I think we want to start thinking about what this bus looks like. Uh, and, and I'm using the word bus just because it's, it's, it's a word I've heard other people use to, I'm pressing all the wrong buttons, uh, use to describe this kind of layout system. So I want to make sure I have enough room where I'm not bumping up against this tiny lake over here. And we will then turn it this way. And we want to build a couple of splitters. And then I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, so as I'm working on this, um, here's what I want to talk about this week. Uh, I want to talk about language a little bit. Um, because, I mean, there's there's the old saying, uh, you know, as it goes of, you know, sticks and stones, blah, 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 break my bones, words will never hurt me, which is honestly, to me, one of the just most nonsensical um, ideas there is. Uh, if, if I think about sort of all of human history, um, I'm not sure there's any more powerful thing that people have ever created than than language. Um, the idea, the, you know, the, the amount of, of, I don't know if it's, it, it's both sort of pain and greatness and strength and wonder, um, and horror, uh, that words have created over the year. I don't think it, I think it pales in comparison to anything else out there. It's simply the strongest, most impactful, most, you know, um, uh, devastating and powerful systems ever created by human thought. So this idea that, that, you know, oh, words are meaningless. Words are powerless. They, they're, they're just words. They bounce off. You don't worry about it. Um, is utter nonsense. It just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it seems like, you know, it, it seems like a fundamental, uh, intentional misunderstanding of the power of words. Um, so why do I bring this up? There was a story earlier this week uh, about a uh, oh 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 well we uh, we're gonna lose that turret maybe oh we're gonna lose ourselves no 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 run away run away run to the turret run to the turret whew all right well I guess that was the right place to build a turret. <laughs> We are going to have to rebuild that turret, but that was definitely the right place to build it. Uh, so let's build a bunch more magazines, and we will build that turret there. Uh, good thing we had our armor. That seems to have helped. Um, yeah. Turrets. They help. Uh, so there was this story this week of um, 
of a, of a Hearthstone player um, who was uh, doing unexpectedly well in a tournament, um, and you know was was beating some significant players and was um, you know making a name for himself and and really won something like eight out of uh, of nine of his matches. Um, it was, you know, it had a remarkable run. It was really, you know, this was a guy who was really excited. This was his opportunity to kind of set himself on the professional stage. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name right now. Um, but he happened to be a, a, a an African-American man, a, a black man. Um, and had no idea uh, the things, and I guess, you know, from some interviews I've heard, probably wasn't that surprised to find the things that were being said about him um, in Twitch chat. So these uh, these events are often broadcast through Twitch, and this was no exception. Um, and and while everybody you know in in the event was sort of lauding his um, his his progress, his his effort, uh, there was this huge contingent of Twitch chat, which was I mean, it's Twitch chat, right? Like we'll get to that part in a second um that was just using the most the, the, all the things you fear they might have said they said right there's there's nothing here to that's that's unexpected they would they just um they did all the kind of dumb silly um racially provocative things uh, and i'm going to get to that word a little more because i think it's an important one um that you would expect uh, expect in the terms of what's a horrible thing people could do. Here's a horrible thing people could do. And that that's exactly what they did. Um, which is, you know, in the one sense, just tragic. Oh, that's wrong. Um, just tragically unfortunate because here's this guy having, a, you know, an experience uh, that is, you know, rare um, for anyone um and it's it's marred by by this you know absolutely disgraceful kind of language and that i think there's a component of the way people think about this that is well that's twitch chat right that's that's how chat in in you know rooms goes you know it's it's awful but it's ultimately just a bunch of dumb people saying something ridiculous and they probably don't mean it they're not you know we can call them racist or whatever but they're just kind of um saying stupid stuff to be provocative uh which yeah which i think is a fundamental i don't know if it's a misunderstanding but it is uh, certainly an intentional relatively intentional choice to minimize the impact of language i think it falls under that that same umbrella of, now oh, they're just words, and actually probably the people who said them probably didn't mean them. Um, they were just saying things to be provocative. They were saying something like to get attention. They wanted to, um, you know, exist in that moment and just kind of be, oh, I can say this thing, and um, what's the consequence of that, right? I'm just on Twitch chat. Everybody else is saying it, so why not? Um which I think is what made me begin to think about this topic, because that that philosophy, that approach to the power of words and what they can do and how they can impact people on both a personal level and a much larger level, um, it's just such a, it, it sells it so short. Um, you know, I... I think about times to some degree where, you know, I've, I've put myself out there over the years uh, in terms of just playing games and writing about games and commenting about games and, and being involved in the overall community. And, you know, while not simple, um, I've, you have to develop sort of a thick skin. Um, that's just sort of an assumption of the role is, okay, well, people say horrible things because it's the internet. So, uh, you can't be surprised and you can't be impacted by that, um, which is unfortunate, but often feels like a reality. I think it's some of the things that um, 
people feel with a lot of the the her- claims of harassment that are going on, right? That 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 sort of presumptive notion in a lot of people's heads that yeah, they said a dumb thing, but they were just being stupid and provocative and just trying to get attention, and they're not going to act on any of those things. Um, which I think is is sort of the instinctive place a lot of people go to, um, and I think it's. I think it's that kind of mentality that has enabled those actions and that kind of behavior. Um, and it's, it's really problematic to me because there's a point at which people realize they are not going to be held accountable for an action. And to me, the logical reaction and follow through of that is if I'm not going to be held accountable for this action, when do I reach the point of accountability? If, if I am just some random guy chatting on Twitch chat and, you know, maybe, maybe I get banned from this particular broadcast under this particular name, uh, which honestly, if you have a brain in your head, you can find 10 ways to subvert that and go around that um and then what's the harm why what what's you know what's the harm in taking it to a next level or a next level uh and you know i think for the most part most people um even if they are looking to sort of push that that boundary push that envelope so to speak um they do they they stay within a realm of natural uh, like like most people are just doing it to get attention and that has a specific moment where they transfer from oh i'm being provocative and you know everybody's commenting or i'm just saying a thing that um feels to me to be acceptable and to some horrible degree funny um but it it, but it's harmless in the end um The reality is probably, yeah, most of those people don't represent a huge risk, Um, but they do. This is my this is the point I'm trying to get to. I think they do influence a mentality and an acceptability level that that does escalate a realm of what is acceptable behavior. Um, because I think there are people who, lots of people in Twitch chat or whatever conversation, I'm using Twitch chat as an example because it is the example of this particular case. But I think you could talk about, you know, all kinds of scenarios where this kind of behavior happens. What is this thing? This doesn't belong. You don't belong here. Get out of there. Um, oh, I remember I wanted to go and get, uh, transport stuff. Where that kind of behavior sort of unlocks the actions of other people. And that can become an escalating thing, right? You know, the idea of I can say this thing because everybody's sort of saying it. And if not, you know, it comes from a place of, you know, somebody somebody begins that step. Somebody begins that process. Um, Yeah. Taking it to another level, I guess maybe a, a to some degree more personal level. And let me assure you, I am not by any means, uh, comparing anything that's ever happened to me to the sort of, uh, endemic and intrinsic racism that, that, that exists for far, far too many people. Um, but you know, by virtue of being a person who has some, however small visibility on the internet, um, you know, I have endured my uh, share of trolls or, and, and often not even trolls, just people who, um, decide to take attack with me uh that is um undesirable unwelcome um and 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 just bad for lack of a better term um nope 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 nope. that that was bad there we go um you know the reality is when people put something out there that is extremely negative and 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 it's sometimes intentionally or unintentionally hurtful um it has an effect on me it just does like i wish i wish i were a bigger person to say oh i've developed this super thick skin and you know that stuff doesn't hurt me anymore um but the reality is is that words have power words have an influence on people's lives 
um, and trying to pretend otherwise in the sake of saying they're just words is it's idealistic and unrealistic. Like this poor guy just had the best day of his, you know, gaming professional life. And it is immediately marred by um, these group of people who, for the most part, I think were not intentionally taking any, you know, specific act. Um, but by virtue of that idea of not believing that words have power, not believing that their words, the fact that they were saying this thing, oh, you know, relax, it's just a joke, um, which falls to my mind right under that same idea of, oh, it's just a social experiment. It's just a prank. Don't take it so seriously. Um, f belies a complete misunderstanding of the power of words uh, and, and the impact those words can have on people. Um, I, I, I feel like words and the way people use them and deploy them is grossly misunderstood and underappreciated. Um, and at a time in civilization, frankly, the history of civilization, where the ability to communicate on a just colossal level uh, to an, an incredible number of people, um, the ability to do that this is the worst possible time, the worst possible moment in, in kind of the history of humanity for humanity to just sort of shrug its shoulders and go, eh, they're just, you know, they're just saying stuff. Don't sweat it. It's no big deal. It's a huge deal. It is a huge deal. You know, whether it is, you know, I'll use this example, and I haven't had to experience this yet, I'm sure you know, potentially I, I might at some point, um, you know, YouTube comments, there's, there's sort of this, this pervasive saying of, oh, don't read YouTube comments, they're, they're going to be awful. And it's just sort of accepted as a fundamental kind of um, price of being in the game, right? You know, you, if you get enough people who are watching you, you're going to have some, well, frankly, some horrible people within that group. Um, and that's a, that seems a ridiculous thing to just fundamentally concede. I don't understand that comfort level of just saying, well, look, you know, that's that's the price of the game. If you choose to play here, uh, understand that people can and often will be awful. Because um, I think that sort of tacitly goes right to this idea of, yeah, um, people are bad and, you know, people will say mean things, but don't worry about it because they're just words they're just words is it's a it, to me it's just a horrible statement um it's one that really bothers me i hear it a lot um sticks and stones you know words words make up national treaties words make up the the declarations of war and independence they make the greatest speeches that have changed minds you can easily i think make an argument that um, words are why things like slavery doesn't exist in the way it once did. Words are the reason that nations, you know, there are many nations that value uh, freedom and, and personal independence and personal rights. Um, you can make the argument that words, um, words shape religions, they shape identities, they shape cultures. And to just then turn around and write that off as something that's just, eh, no big deal. They're just words. They don't hurt you. It's to me, it's nonsense. Um, it just it just doesn't compute in any fundamental way. So, yeah. So that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit. I, I, I apologize if it felt like I got a little preachy there. I'm, that wasn't my intent. Um, it just, you know, I, I guess I'm a person who uh, who has been brought up in some ways. Um, and brought myself, you know, not saying to raise myself or anything like that, but brought myself up in a mentality of words are powerful and words are meaningful and words are vital. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the ethos of the writer in me. Um, and, and I do, I do, I just, I do bristle at the notion, uh, that words don't carry that power. I think, I think every, Every moment of human history runs absolutely counter uh, to that notion. So 
there you go. Uh, that's all I have to say about that. Um, it was a horrible thing that happened. Hopefully, you know, you know, maybe, and I don't think everybody who was involved had ill will. I don't even necessarily automatically think that everybody involved in that is, you know, a fundamentally a racist of some kind, right? They, they said a dumb thing and they have painted themselves in a horrible corner. Um, but race, you know, racism, I think true racism is sort of an ethos, an idea of superiority. And I think a lot of these people, they're just kids saying, you know, kid, and I'm using kids not in an age sense, but in a, in a, in a kind of maturity mentality sense, um, who were just saying dumb stuff because it sounded like everybody else was saying dumb stuff and I wanted to be cool too. And I know there've been times in my life, um, where I've said something I absolutely regret, um, just because it seemed harmless and fine at the time. I think there's a lot of that out there. Um, and I think the, every time we as a, as a culture, uh, excuse that as just words, and honestly, I think you you know, I think you see it in, in, in our, in our mainstream culture right now. I think there's a lot of evidence out there. Um, a lot of people out there who are entirely comfortable with the idea of somebody in power in a position of authority, uh, who has the ear of thousands or millions or hundreds of millions, um, being able to just say whatever they want without, without any sense of consequence, without any authority, uh, without any, um, any truth often, uh, and just being able to come back later and go, well, I was just talking in the moment. Don't worry about it. Um, that's a, that's, that, that's a scary sign to me. That's yeah. And I'll just leave it at that because I think that begins to go into a area of conversation I'm, I'm not prepared to cross at this point. Um, but words are powerful. Respect them. I get that if you take one message away from this, it would be respect the power of words, respect that they have an authority and an impact and a consequence uh, that should not be sold short. So there you go. Preachy over. Sorry about that. Um, this is just something that's been on my mind a lot lately. And, and you know, hopefully uh, hopefully you, you hear it as what it's intended to be, which is just like this is something that interests me and I wanted to have a conversation about. What am I doing? Um, we're going to wrap this episode up pretty quick here. What I'm trying to do is begin to branch off and set up a new funnel for research. So we know that we have, um, we're going to need copper plate and iron gears. Um, copper plate coming in this way, we can make iron gears uh, to turn that into uh, red red science, green science, inserters, and transport belt. Uh, ultimately, again, we basically need a bunch of iron and copper plate. Uh, inserters are iron and copper, um, and transport belt is a bunch of iron. So breaking off this sort of iron chain, and we might need more than that, um, to help begin to make a bunch of green and red science. Anyway, uh, that's it for this episode, I think. Thank you, for as always, for joining me. If you have thoughts on it, I'm, I'm definitely interested in your perspective. So please drop me a line, drop me a comment. Um, let me know your take on the power of words. Uh, am I overselling it? Possibly. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past me. Um, but until next time, my name is Sean Sands uh, from Gamers with Jobs and the Gamers with Jobs Conference Call Podcast. Uh, I appreciate you sticking with me, and we will see you real soon.